Hi there. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Let me get comfortable with my notes here. Uh, yes, I know. I'm tan. I know. I'm tan. Uh, I do want to get a little bit darker. I am wearing sunscreen. Not a lot, but I'm wearing sun sunscreen. Sun, some sunscreen. Um, this is pretty normal for me in the summertime. I'm usually pretty dark. Uh, but let's talk about compliance. Uh, compliance, areas of compliance. Now, um, doing a compliance check uh, for us, pre-departure, pre-arrival, and sometimes mid-flight, we're going to do our compliance air checks. Um, so in my airline, uh, we work on Airbus A um, A319s, A320s, and A321s. Uh, there are very specific areas of the aircraft that each flight attendant is responsible for in terms of doing compliance checks. Um, so, and compliance uh, checks would involve making sure people's bags are stowed, seat belts are fastened, cell phones are on airplane mode, window shades are down, the exit rows, that kind of thing. Um, and so what I wanted to, to do on this video uh, is do a little video about uh, what we do and why we do it in terms of compliance. I do want to say, uh, as I should say in most of my videos, I don't, uh, is that everything I say uh, is based on my experience and my opinion. Uh, as a flight attendant uh, with my airline, I'm not speaking at all on behalf of my airline or anybody else for that matter. Um, so with that said, Compliance. So we'll start with seatbelts because that's the that's a very very common one. Um, so seatbelts, you want them low and tight about your hips. So as we're moving through the cabin, uh, doing our compliance, we're gonna make sure that those seatbelts are nice and low and secure. If they're draped loosely across someone's lap, I always ask them, please, could you just secure that seatbelt for? Just tighten that up a little bit for me. Thank you. Um, why is that? Hmm. <laughs> it's not a good reason. Um, I'm going to ask you to keep it buckled at all times while in the air. Why is that? Hmm. Not a good reason, but a big one. Um, <laughs> my watch thinks I have a, I'm doing a dynamic workout because I'm moving my hands so much. It's hysterical. Uh, stay seated with the seatbelt buckled while in, on the tarmac. Why is that? Taking a nap while sleeping, why do I want you to have your seatbelt buckled over your blanket or jacket? Lap children, which are lap children in our airline, are any children under the age of two who are not seated in their own seat. They're uh, to be held by the parent uh, during that flight. So uh, frequently enough, parents will buckle the seatbelt over them and the baby, thinking that is the safest way to go about it. It is not. It is the most dangerous thing to do on an airplane with a baby. Um, well, maybe. Uh, but, uh, you know, if that seatbelt is buckled over the two of you, we come to a sudden stop. You go flying into the seatbelt and you're going to crush that little baby with your body weight and the inertia and momentum. Um, so we don't do that. So you want to uh, make sure that if you see a uh, baby, buckled under the seatbelt between a mom and the seatbelt or a dad. Uh, one of the things you do during your checks is to make sure that they take that seatbelt off and buckle themselves in holding the baby securely. Taking a nap while sleeping, we want you to uh, buckle that seatbelt over the blanket that's covering you so that I don't have to wake you up during mid-flight when that seatbelt sign comes on. Uh, otherwise, I want to make sure that you're safe so uh, I may have to wake you up. You don't want me to wake you up, right? So, uh, and you as a flight attendant don't want to wake people up because the look they give you is absolute death. Um, Seatbelts uh, fastened while on the tarmac. Uh, while on a tarmac, uh, we are either waiting for a gate, uh, we are moving to, to take off, we've just landed. Uh, flight attendants, we're remaining seated. We have to remain seated in our jump seat with our harness fully buckled unless there is a safety issue going on. Um, and our passengers, our guests also are required to wear their seatbelt and remain seated because anything can happen on the ground. Um, there's all sorts of news stories about other airplanes clipping the wings of other aircraft. 
uh, vehicles. There's lots of little vehicles and people moving around these aircraft. Uh, and vehicles have crashed into airplanes while they're on the tarmac. All sorts of things can happen. So we ask people to remain seated with their seatbelt fastened, even if we're just on the tarmac staying uh, at rest. Um, buckled at all times while well, in the air um, because clear air turbulence is a real thing. Lots of flight attendants have lots of horrifying stories about being injured terribly uh, when the air was fine and then poof, they hit the ceiling and hit the ground. Um, so we want to make sure that um, our guests have their seatbelt fastened at all times. We can't make them. I can't make them do anything. I can only ask them to. Uh, and having your seatbelt low and tight about your hips, not just loosely draped across your hips. Uh, I wrote, uh, wrote down here two words, broken legs. I know, not very charming. Uh, every rule that, the, uh, that we ask our guests to follow are based on uh, tragedy. They're all written in blood. And you know, plenty of people apparently have had their seatbelts on real loosely if they're wearing one at all. And you know, if that airplane comes to a complete stop, they're gonna slide right under that seatbelt and really, really hurt themselves. So uh, we're gonna ask people when they're doing, uh, when we're about to take off, before we take off, before we land, make sure those seatbelts are all in compliance. One thing about um, seatbelts uh, I wrote here is a seatbelt extension. Uh, our guests of size, those larger people who may not fit in a regular seat with their regular seatbelt, we can offer them an extension, a seatbelt extension, which is one of our demo seatbelts. Uh, we can very casually and subtly hand that to them. They are not allowed to wear their own seatbelt extension. I know the color of our seatbelts. I also know the color of our extensions. If I see something that is different or wrong, I'm going to stop what I'm doing, see it, and try to take action. Uh, so they cannot uh, wear their own seatbelt extensions. They can only wear the ones that we have provided. Uh, car seats. Uh, the person who is lead, who is up in front, uh, it's their responsibility to check um, the compliance of every seat, uh, car seat or CRS, Child Restraint System. They all have to come with a logo on the device or the, the seat saying that it's authorized to use on an aircraft, that the FAA, it's on a list that uh, has been cleared by the FAA. So uh, compliance around car seats, very important. If they are not compliant, they do not have a logo, they're either stored if they're small in the overhead bin or they're gate checked. Bags stowed. This is the one that's the easiest and the hardest. Um, uh, bags need to be stowed under the seat in front of you. So most airlines have very limited space in the overhead bins. That space is designated for those people who have a carry-on, uh, a larger item that should go in the overhead bin. People, are, are, as guests come on board, frequently enough, they just throw their backpack, their clothes, their coats, their souvenirs in the overhead bin slam them shut so no one else can put anything in there, and then they sit down. Uh, as I'm going through the cabin, frequently enough, especially, I'm keeping an eye on the overhead bins, and especially in certain locations, those overhead bins fill up really quickly with backpacks and sun hats and all sorts of stuff. Balloons, people in Disney love to bring back balloons. Never a good ending to that story. Um, <laughs> so as I move through the cabin, if I start to recognize that bins are filling up and I still see a lot of passengers behind me, I'm frequently going to say, hey, whose super cute bag is this? This purple backpack. Oh, that's mine. Would you mind tucking that under the seat in front of you? Frequently enough, they say yes. Yeah. Sometimes they say no. But we need to make sure that there's room in the overhead bins for other people's uh, larger items. In my airline, people pay a lot of money to carry that bag on. And if there's no room because someone has a sun hat up there, guess which item is moving? The sun hat. Uh, all your personal items, baby bags, backpacks, duffel bags, man purses, emotional baggage, all of that goes under the seat in front of them, completely under the seat in front of them. Why is it? Why do we ask people also 
crossbody bags, those super cute little Gucci bag, that little camera, that really nice camera on a camera strap around your neck, where I also have them take those things off of them uh, and not to hang them on the tray table in front of them. Somehow that's a big winner there. Um, so all those bags need to go under the seat in front of them. Any crossbody items need to be removed and either held closely or tucked under, or I'll put them in the overhead bin. Why is that? If we have to evacuate the aircraft, we have 90 seconds. 90 seconds, a minute and a half, to evacuate even the largest of our aircraft. Uh, and that includes elderly, disabled passengers, children, everybody, 90 seconds. Uh, in the event of an emergency, a big time emergency, fire, smoke, whatever's happening, if you are in the aisle, if a, if a passenger is in the aisle seat, they can probably get into the, um, into the aisle and to an emergency exit pretty quickly. But the people who are seating in the middle or against the window, they do not have di direct egress exit to the aisle and to our emergency exits. They're going to trip over the person who tripped over that super cute little Gucci bag that was sticking out, that little backpack with straps everywhere. So it's a big time safety issue to have bags kind of just stuck near under the seat. Um, and plus, if it's a five hour flight, trust me, you want that bag all the way into the seat in front of you, otherwise you have your knees up here like this. Uh, so it's a huge, tremendous safety issue um, to have all bags and personal items stowed completely under the seat in front of you. My, when I was on my OE, I, I think I said this on my OE video, when I was on my OE, I was pretty loose and lax about things. Oh, it's tucked under enough. No, I'm pretty strict, but I have a nice way of delivering it. And um, I think I should probably do a video about how I say certain things. Like if someone doesn't want to move their bag or doesn't want to put their laptop away or won't get off their cell phone, I think I should probably do a video about how I would handle those situations. But bags need to be tucked under the seat in front of them. Um, let's see, tray tables. Sort of the same thing with uh, bags. You know, if you tr just try, get it, have, watch a passenger try to get to the window seat when a tray table is down in the, in the row. It's impossible, you can't do it. Um, so same story, if we have to evacuate the aircraft, we have 90 seconds to get everybody safely out of there. If somebody's tray table is down, they may be able to get out, but the people who are in outboard Inboard would be closer to the center of the plane. Outboard would be closer to the fuselage. Those are two phrases you'll learn in training. Um, and they're useful. We use those a lot. Um, inboard, outboard. Uh, those people outboard are going to have an impossible time getting into the aisle and to the emergency exit row if a tray table is down in their way. And converse, if for some reason the closest exit is an over window wing, uh, over wing window exit, uh, those people who are in the aisle may not be able to get to that exit if someone's tray table is down. And when is the most dangerous time to be on an aircraft? Yeah, when you're on the ground or just above the ground, 800 feet, you know, that's the most dangerous time. Things could happen. All sorts of things could happen. Uh, so we want to make sure while we're on the ground, while we're taking off, those tray tables are upright so that people can egress and get out of there in the event of, of an emergency, very much like those bags. Uh, and you know, I'll tell you, the, the eye rolling I get, someone has their you know, snack or their, their Popeyes, box of Popeyes if we're in Atlanta, um, on that tray table and they're eating. And I ask them to please raise that tray table up for me. Thank you very much. <sighs> Whatever, okay. I should do another video on how to handle that. <laughs> um, oh, anything on tray tables. So laptops, large tablets, we ask that you, before takeoff, close, uh, you know, close those up, store them away. Because if we had to evacuate, if there was an emergency, the plane stopped suddenly, those laptops and large tablets become projectiles. And where are those things typically used? On a tray table. So there's a couple of reasons we ask people to stop using laptops and large tablets before takeoff and before landing. 
window shades. Um, most window shades, doesn't matter. There's no real safety issue with most of our window shades, but particularly over the emergency exits, if you are seated by a WeFly Airbus, so A319 or A320, uh, we have overwing window exits where there's a window, a kind of a, a door that you have to kind of open and then throw out if we had to. Um, what was I going to do? Uh, oh, the window shade. I was like, what was I going to tell you about? So when those window shades, those typically, the window shades open by pushing them down. The rest of them, you lift to look outside, right? Uh, but the ones at those window exits drop. Uh, why is that? Hmm. Because if we did land hard and there's a potential for something unpleasant happening, that window shade is gonna drop automatically. So if we were in flight and that window shade was closed and we had to land hard, gravity is gonna be our friend and make sure that, that window shade is open. Now, why is it important that the window shade is open? If we did land hard or we had some unfortunate accident, uh, we want to either have the passenger who's seated next to that window or the flight attendant be able to look outside that window to make sure that the exit is clear and that it's safe. If there's fire or there's, you know, um, broken pieces of whatever uh, that would make it unsafe to actually use the exit, you wanna be able to look out there first. So that is why we have the window shades open at the emergency exits. Uh, and if you're a flight attendant, your window shade, this big, has to be open as well during uh, takeoff and landing. Also, those window shades also drop typically. I, I'm, I believe this is true with, with everyone those window shades are gonna drop when you open them as well, if you push them down to open. Two tips, two quick tips as to being a good passenger, a good fellow passenger. This has nothing to do with being a flight attendant. Although I do ask people to do this. In Vegas, particularly in the summertime or in Florida, it gets very hot in that aircraft really, really quickly. So I ask people to, before they leave the aircraft, to close their window shade and to turn on their air vents so that the interior of the aircraft stays a little cooler, a little more comfortable for the crew and also for the next group of guests. Also, you know, when we're doing a red eye, we're leaving Vegas at, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. We're getting into Baltimore at sunrise. That sun comes through those windows like laser beams. Oh my God, kill it, they're horrible. And you're trying to sleep, you've got this full-on laser beam in your face. So be a good passenger, be a good fellow guest, and try to be thoughtful of, of the people around you when those window, with those window shades. Uh, nothing about compliance, but be, about being a good, a good fellow passenger. Uh, phones, I left this one for last. So um, I had to go on, online and do a little research around this one, because people ask me why we have to have our phones on airplane mode. Uh, first off, my first thought, and this is just my belief, is that it's for safety. Everything is for safety. Everything we're asking you to do is, is our passengers should do is for safety. Uh, but first, if you're, if someone's on their phone, blah, 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 and they're talking, talking, chatting, 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 uh, during takeoff, during landing, which is the most dangerous time to be in an airplane, uh, they're not going to be aware of any direction or safety issues. Uh, if they're blah, 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 talking, 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 and I need them to take action right away to help them or somebody else, I, we can't have them being blah, 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 blah on the phone. Uh, so it's really just to honestly, hopefully, make sure that people are focused. Ideally, in my fantasy world, no one would be able to be talking or playing on their phone while we're doing a safety demo because people are like, mm, yeah, whatever. And then if you go back on the news and you watch a few months ago, there was a uh, oxygen mask came down on an aircraft. I won't say who it was. There's a picture of everyone on board and all of their, and I have a rant video about this. Everyone on board, except for one guy apparently, had their air oxygen mask, their O2 mask over their mouth and not their nose. The wrong way to do it, by the way. Um, and flight attendants all over the place were making fun of these passengers, which is totally wrong. Um, but, you know, many people aren't paying attention. And in the event of an emergency, 
I want to make sure that you're all and all of my guests are paying attention or are conscious of the situation so that I can help them and they can help me help other people. Um, cell phones. So what else here? When I was a kid, I was in my 30s, uh, I bought my first, <laughs> no 20s, late 20s, I bought my first laptop. And you know, when I had my ancient cell phone, if the volume was down and the phone rang, I knew what was happening because the speakers made a little wah, wah, wah noise. Uh, it interacted with my computer speakers. Now, I think in the days gone by, cell phones actually interacted potentially with uh, instruments and the flight deck. Not cool because <laughs> those guys are doing an important job, right? I think that's probably less, if not rare, that that might ever happen today. Uh, but again, I think it still goes back to safety. I did go on the internet and do a little Google search as to why um, we are supposed to turn our cell phones off. And one of those things I found was it's actually not the FAA. It's not the Federal Aviation. It's the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, that uh, makes the rule about cell phones. I did not know that. Uh, but they uh, have a ban. And I, I'd say... Most airlines, and I, 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 I hear this, most airlines restrict passengers from making calls, phone calls, over in-flight Wi-Fi. That's something I thought was interesting. Um, and I have an opinion on that too. Um, but on the internet, the FAA says that it's to protect against radio interference to cell phone networks on the ground. Meaning at 40,000 feet in the air, active cell phones would be picking up service from multiple cell towers on the ground. This could cr crowd networks on the ground and disrupt service. That was a quote I pulled from the internet. Uh, so it's not really so much about us on the air, but it could complicate um, cell phone networks on the ground, which is pretty interesting. And cell phones are important to a lot of people's lives. Um, now, what did I say here? Now my phone loses service. All right, so some airlines have Wi-Fi. Our airline is going to be installing Wi-Fi in all of our aircraft starting, I think, in November or the summer. I forget what I have to read it. Um, we're installing Wi-Fi in all of our aircraft. High-speed Wi-Fi, not this little hotel limping along Wi-Fi for a very small price per leg. So it's gonna be really fantastic. So people can actually uh, serve, um, you know, watch movies, videos, potentially texts and emails, that kind of stuff, get work done. Uh, for an ultra low cost carrier, two thumbs up. That's a lot, of, that's a great thing. Um, but um, I mentioned that thing about most airlines restrict passengers from making calls over Wi-Fi. I personally, I think that's all starting uh, stemming from a safety issue. Again, like I said earlier, I need to make sure that people are uh, able to respond to directions in the event of an emergency. Uh, but also, can you imagine an A321 holds 228 guests. Could you imagine a majority of those people on their phones talking? It's hard enough to listen to people in the airport when they're on their phones, never mind sitting next to you in an aircraft. Everyone's trying to sleep, but you got some guy on the phone, blah, 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 blah. He's had a couple of drinks and he's just uh, talking to his ex-girlfriend. Uh, there are all sorts of things that could be happening on cell phones in the air that would make very unpleasant neighbors uh, and potentially dangerous. So um, I think that it, will for the future uh, stay uh, restricted from making cell phone calls um, while you're on the Wi-Fi. Um, but um, so I wrote on the bottom, whether you agree or disagree with what the flight attendant is asking about turning your phone on airplane mode. Sorry, I just hit my camera. Turn your phone on airplane mode. <laughs> Listen to the flight attendant, please, 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 please. And if you're a flight attendant, this is this is another video I do want to make as well, is uh, again, how to deliver these suggestions and instructions. There's an easier and a harder way to do that. I hear both. Typically, sir, would you mind please uh, ending your call? Some people are gonna be like, that phone needs to go off. And if they don't pay attention or don't listen, 
because they weren't listening to you. They'll be like, sir, turn that phone off or I have to call the authorities. <gasps> There's a right as an easier and a harder way of making these, delivering this information. Um, and I think that's what, I, there's a couple other things I could say about, you know, special safety demonstrations for those people who are either hard of hearing, uh, visually impaired, whatever, but that could be a, di be a different video. Uh, if you feel I've missed something or left something out, please leave a comment below. If you're airline, again, I'm just speaking on my experience and my direction. I'm not telling you what, I'm not telling you, um, much more than you would see if you were sitting in an aircraft watching your flight attendant do their job. Um, so if, if you feel I've left something out or if your airline has you approach something differently, please leave a comment below. Definitely subscribe. I'm going to be doing, um, I'm giving myself homework because this, this video that, uh, on how to deliver instructions in a peaceful, pleasant manner, <laughs> I think would be helpful. Because I do hear people bark a lot at some of our guests. So I'm going to, uh, I think I should do a video about how to get passengers to do things they don't want to do. Um, that would be a great video. Um, and if you do like my videos and don't want to miss anything, there's a little bell icon. You can hit that. And that means that you'll get a little email or notification from YouTube letting you know that I have filmed a video and uploaded it. I do upload videos once every three or four days usually once a week on average now. Um, and I have over a thousand subscribers now. Last time I looked, I had like a thousand and twenty-eight. Mind blown. That is from, I've been, I started filming on uh, Christmas Eve, 2017. Uh, and now it's just six and a half, seven months later. And I have well over a thousand subscribers. Blows my mind. Um, I want to thank you guys for subscribing and for the messages you leave me. I'm um, humbled. <sighs> I'm going to make myself cry. Uh, so I'm going to stop now and let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, drop one below, okay? I'll talk to you later. Fly safe.